I'm just finishing the final touches on this project and now I can call it complete. I've been working on this cargo trailer to RV conversion for well over a year now and I thought let's do a walkthrough and I'll kind of show you what everything has been done to this. But first, let me spin you a yarn. I bought this trailer about four years ago to use as an office at our old house because I needed office space and I didn't have it in the house. So one of the biggest questions I get is why is the door on the driver's side? And that is simply because when we backed it into our driveway, that was the side that was accessible to me to get into it. But actually I kind of like it being on that side. Anyway, let me tell you a little bit more about this trailer. This trailer is a seven by 12. It's a tandem axle and it was built by Diamond Cargo in Douglas, Georgia. Now, once we moved out here to the new house, I no longer needed an office. But what I did need was a hurricane evacuation RV. And that brings us to this. Oh, look, it's a princess. We found a princess inside the camper. Hello, there. <laughs> Hello my lovely. Hello. My idea with this whole, that, that rooster, my gosh. Ah, my whole idea with this camper build was to keep it like Sunday morning. Let me show you how this works. Raleigh, can you assist me? First off, let me throw my keys and lock on the ground. The first thing we built was the dinette. Now Riley helped me make these cushions because daddy don't sew, but daddy does no wood. So we actually took quarter inch plywood and put this foam that we ordered on top of it, then wrapped the material and just stapled it. Riley helped me do that. And they open up to have storage inside each one of them. Mm -hmm. This side opens up the same way. And you've got the two compartments. So we can put a lot of stuff in there whenever we do have to leave, either kind of our clothing or uh, just any important stuff that we want to take with us. The tabletop comes off, kind of lift it up there. Urgh. Got to pop it. Pop it, pop it like it's hot. Pop it, pop it, pop it. There you go. Okay, we'll just set it right here for now. And then I ordered these brackets that were, I wanted something low profile. And you can see how these are made right here on the floor. I didn't want something that stood way up. So these just go in and then they spin. And then you can finish tightening them down like that. And I just ordered these, I think I ordered these off of Amazon. So can you get that one out, baby? Yeah, and now turn the whole thing. There you go. All right, you can just set it right there for now. And then take our tabletop, put that up. There you go. Put that in there. Put that in there. And I made these really tight. Let's put them corner to corner. Okay, and then shove it down. And there's the main bed. So when I built this, this had to hold two adults, three kids, and two dogs, at least. This bed ain't gonna hold all of them. So my dad and I came up with the idea of this bunk bed at the top. This is definitely a two person project as I showed in the previous videos whenever I built this. It's a little bit difficult for one person. Why won't you go? Oh, see, I got a screw up in there. And it's just that easy, folks. All you have to do is pull out these two pieces of wood that are on piano hinges. You ready? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I'm trying, I'm short. <laughs> Madison, can you give Riley an assist here? <laughs> you got you all going up there and help her. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, we ready? Let's lower it down. Alrighty. I would like to point out that normally this would be Kim and I doing this, so it would still be a little bit easier. But they did a good job. We're ready for a nap down here or a nap up top. We found that it's not always necessary to put the top bunk bed up though because there's actually room, especially if it's just me and Kim or if somebody wants to sit up here, and especially if little itty bitties up underneath the, the bunk bed, that we can actually fit here with the bunk bed down. It's just if we want it to be more open and more spacious, we shoot it to the top. Now, as far as the covering on the inside of the trailer, this is vinyl plank flooring. I mean, actually it's luxury vinyl plank flooring. You can just feel the luxury when you touch it. This was actually done when this was still my office and I needed it to be really quiet in here because I used to do record, uh, you know, voiceover stuff for my other YouTube channel. And we, there was a lot of car noise and road noise outside. So what I did was I took ceiling acoustic panels and glued those to the wall. And then I had this leftover flooring from our old house where we'd redone it. And I just glued that on top of it. And it really helped with cutting the sound down. And also it added some extra insulation. The windows were already in the trailer when I ordered it. And that's kind of what dictated how we built this whole dinette and bed system. I would have loved to have had something wider that would have actually been more useful, but the windows were already in the trailer. So I had to work with what I had. Outlets were already in the trailer. The AC was already in the trailer. The girls and I built this, and actually my dad built this cabinet for the trailer. Push down a little bit. <laughs> and again, just keeping it super simple and trying to leave as much space as we can. Then today, I just cut the door out of a piece of MDF and I used my router to put a round over on the edge. Then I drilled out for the cabinet hinges using my handy dandy Craig hinge boring kit. And then I just put in these bloom press in hinges. For the countertop, all I did was go to the local hardware store. I think I got this at Lowe's. I mean, I could have just glued up some four by fours, honestly, for the countertop, but to save time and because these were cheaper, I just bought up these glued panels. I've got videos on all this, so you know I'll put those links to those videos up in the description and probably somewhere up here on the top of the screen. Very simple down here. <laughs> As you can see, I like to keep a lot of adapters because you just never know what kind of adapter you're going to need. So I've got adapters out the yin yang. For the sink system, very simple. I've got these two water containers. One is for the gray water and one is for drinking water. And then I've got just a, a pump here and it just plugs into, I've actually got a surge protector mounted up in here, which you probably can't see. And that's where everything plugs into. And then I've just got it plugged into the wall outlet back here in the back corner. And I'll show you how that works. Let's turn the water on. and the pump cuts off when we don't need the water. So, you know, it's kind of loud, there's no hot water, but we don't really need that. Again, we don't use this to go camping in all the time. This was mostly for emergencies and to live out of for hopefully maximum a few days to a week. I've got the microwave, sorry to say microphone, I've got the microwave in here, and then I just put that grommet back there so that I can plug into the surge protector. The refrigerator here I ordered, and you know this same deal it's just plugged into that same surge protector the wall that we added this is four by fours that i split so it's two by twos it's actually one and a half by one and a half and then we covered it with quarter inch plywood on top of that when we get over here to this part you know what before i talk about that before i talk about that let me fix my microphone that keeps falling off I do want to talk about the, the one thing that I really do hate about this trailer is this door. When I ordered this trailer, and this is something you need to keep in mind, I didn't order this based on like a sheet that I had and I went down and picked all the specs. It's kind of crazy whenever you order a cargo trailer, it's really something to look into instead of buying a travel trailer. 
because all of the upgrades on cargo trailers, most of them can be like incredibly cheap. You know, so you've got your base trailer, but by the time, you know, maybe this costs 30 bucks and then this costs 30 bucks. It's really inexpensive to upgrade your cargo trailer. But I did mine over the phone and I just was talking with a guy when I was ordering it and he was saying, well, you could do this, you could do this. And I said, here's what I need. So when we put the door on, you know, we did the screen door addition, which I do love having that. That is very handy. But the thing that I hate is this right here, the height of this door. And as Kim was reminded, that's why we've got this thing about always wear your helmet. You just about need a helmet to walk in and out of this thing. When Kim walked into the trailer to help me film this today, first thing she did was bang her head up into there and hurt her neck. Because when you step up in here, if you forget that that's there and you don't come in like this, and you come in like that, you just slam your head up into there and it's with all the force you have because you're stepping up. Very painful. So if you do custom order one or if you buy one um, already made, try to look for a taller door. That's one thing also about this trailer. When I ordered it, I did go with the taller ceiling height. So I think it's a foot taller than normal. So plenty of headroom in here. Back here on this wall, <laughs> this is again from the time whenever it was my office and we did like voice over work right here in the front corner and I needed as much acoustic. What would I call it? Acoustic? I didn't want the acoustics. Soundproof. Soundproofing. Thank you. You know, I didn't want the sound to bounce around in here. So I had this and then back in here, what we've done is, you know, this has basically turned into the, can you see this good? Can you see this back here good? Mm -hmm. This is basically turned into the bathroom area right here, which works out good that we did have these acoustic panels here. Cause Kim, when she's back here, she can make a lot of noise. Uh, no. So <laughs> it, it worked out good. So I think I'm probably going to leave them. I probably hold some of the <laughs> Let me, yeah, that's from you too. Let me show you. <laughs> Don't fall out of the trailer cackling so this is the the toilet that we went with porta potty this is a cassette toilet which simply means it plays your favorite mixtapes it holds all the dirty stuff in here the nasty stuff and then you just can carry it somewhere and you can dig a hole and um, pour all the nasty stuff into the hole Again, that was to keep this super simple. I didn't want to have to empty any tanks underneath the trailer or anything. This is great. This is like even what, uh, like an earth roamer RV uses a cassette toilet. And it's because of the simplicity of the system. Riley says this is going to be her tiny house. She's ready to move out here. Yes, I want to. I just don't have room for the birds. She wants this to be her tiny house for her and her birds until she heard a spooky noise at night. And then she'd be like, can I come to my room? No, I'm, I'm <laughs> so like i said whenever we started this we had three kids two adults and two dogs since then our family has grown and now we have another dog and we have five chickens two rabbits and one hamster and, one three, hamster birds. and, and three birds yeah so <laughs> now the problem is this has been a fun project for our family to work on together the problem now is probably gonna have to sell it and start over on a bigger project and I've got about six months until the next hurricane season starts so we'll see what happens <laughs>